In this video, I'm going to give you 10 additional incredible tips on plasticity that will change the way you work and save you a lot of time. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video, go ahead and watch it. You can see it on the screen. It's loaded with useful tips as well. Now, before we start, one thing, if you're really serious about 3D modeling and 3D in general, then I highly recommend you join our Academy 2.0 program. Currently, it has over 500 members, well over, and it's a very robust curriculum that will teach you everything you need to know about sci-fi hard surface design, rendering, texture, and lighting, everything you need to know to get really good at 3D modeling. In addition, we're expanding into plasticity with our courses, so if you're going to lock your access right now, you're going to get access to plasticity courses later on free of charge. So check it out, link is in the video description. Let's get on with the tips. Tip number one changing the direction orientation of the curve drawn on the solid with v so let's just grab a circle here and draw it in here now if you want to flip the direction of the circle you can move to the edge and it's going to actually flip to the other face but what if you adjusted it to a specific you know uh, let's say dimensions right and you didn't want to really move your mouse then you can just simply press V to flip it between these two orientations. That's a really neat trick to know. And then you can actually start drawing the circle from, you know, from, uh, from this um, perspective. So let's say if you wanted to adjust it to this face here, you can very easily do that. Tip number two, double click on a vert to change it to a control point. Let's say that uh, you were drawing curve like this and you were maintaining actually a tangency. So let me grab this curve here. So you click and then you draw on this blue line to maintain the tangency, right? And then you go down. If you're going to mirror this um, over, you'll have tangency across these two, which means when you actually select them both, right? And you're going to uh, extrude this and you press Ctrl E to remove the edges, you will see that you're gonna have perfect tangency, perfect G1 here connection between these two. There's no creases, nothing, right? But watch this, if I'm going to draw the same curve, but without tangency, right? So I'm gonna go just down here like this and mirror this to the other side, you can clearly see that there's gonna be a crease, right? So if I select them both, press J to join them, press E and extrude it, I'm gonna have this crease in the middle, right? But watch this. If I'm gonna actually go to, to the vert mode, so press one, you can see that we have control points here. I can move them, right? So I can move these, right? But I have a vert in here. And I can't move this, I can't adjust it, I cannot do anything. I would need to rebuild the curve, but what if I don't want to rebuild the curve? You can double click this vert here and it does two things, okay? One, it converts this vert into a control point, we can now adjust. And two, creates a tangency between these two. So now if I'm gonna extend this face, I'm gonna have a perfect connection between the two. The same goes with, um, you know, hard connections like this. So when you draw a line curve like that, right? You can simply double click this to change it into a, a control curve and then you can you know adjust this uh, to your liking very neat trick when you're tracing something let's say uh, an outline of a product okay and you want to use angular curves because it's easier and then you simply double click on verts to change them into control points to adjust the cage Tip number three, Control D for place command. Now, here's a shout out to one of the guys in the previous video of a sea storm who actually gave me an idea of performing Control D after Alt D. So let me show you. The tip was that uh, you can uh, grab this kind of a selection with Control uh, Shift and Plus on the numpad to expand it and press Alt D to grab this imprint and sort of move it over to another solid like this one and boolean it for you know kind of like a decal effect right or like a you know alpha stamp but if you press alt d immediately after you will switch to a place command so you can grab this thing and actually place it on another face without you know having to adjust it that's genius but then wait it's, it gets better so you can press the right mouse button to approve this and when you move your mouse you will see that it just keeps on following your mouse so you can create as many of these as you want and then you can simply you know grab this main shape press q and you can just you know uh, boolean all of these it's a really quick way of working and you can you know let's say you're using screws or some kind of notches or like cuts wedge cuts whatever you can spam the shit out of your model with this in no time Tip number four, an alternate way of using isoprene. So let me show you this on an interesting example. So I'm going to grab um, a circle and uh, I'm going to actually slice this. So let's just trim this um, away. And we're going to combine these uh, into one um, mesh. 
So now we're going to patch it to create a sheet, right? And we can nuke these curves. So here's the problem when I'm going to press Ctrl R to invoke the isoparam tool. You can see that even if I press Tab, no matter what I do, it's just, uh, you know, a line crossing either vertically or horizontally. It's not really very helpful on the curvy surfaces. But watch this. I'm going to take this one and shift this here. And then I'm going to create um, a half curve. And then I'm going to actually sweep it, okay, around this uh, shape to create literally the same shape. So now watch what happens. If I press Ctrl R, instead of a line, I have a circle. And if I press Tab, it's actually going from the middle of the circle. So now I can hover over this edge here and I can actually, you can see that the tooltip is changing. I can find precisely, let's say, for example, 45 degrees angle here, right? And I can create something like this and then, you know, shave off this bit. And I actually have... Um, half and one quarter of a circle precisely uh, cut out out of this sheet that's a really neat trick to have tip number five full bevel and there are two ways of doing this one of them is on a cylindrical shape so you create a cylinder press two for bevel start making a bevel and click here on the side and you have a dome if you want to change that press d for tension adjust the tension left click if you want to go back to the full bevel click here you're good to go right click to confirm on an angular shape is a bit different, so you, what you do is you start making two bevels here, like this, right? And you click here on full, and you're going to get a perfect semicircle here. So now, what you can do is you can start, you know, creating a shape here, and it's going to be perfectly fitted in uh, into this, uh, you know, bevel. Tip number six, exploding curves without using the split curve. That's a really neat trick. So let's say that uh, it's going to save you a shit ton of time. So let's say you got a circle here and you got a line like this and, you know, I don't know, something like this here. And then you got this one here like this, you know, whatever, right? And you wanted to explode them. So normally what you would need to do is you need to use this kind of a split curve tool and click on each of these uh, connections and split them. This is not a very precise way of working and also it's very tedious. So what you want to do first of all is you want to make sure that all the curves are on the same plane. So just like for trimming, they have to be on the same plane. So if they're misaligned like this, you know, in space, right, what you want to do is select all of them, the curves you want to align, press S for scaling, and then you need to choose the axes on which you want to zero them out. So in our case, it's going to be x-axis, the red one, yeah? So S, X, zero, enter, and they're going to collapse on the x-axis, right? So now they're on the same plane, so you can either trim them or you can explode them. So you press Alt-J and look at this. All of these curves, right, split themselves on intersections. So you got all these curves now separately. So you can either remove them or you can do something else with them, whatever you want. So that's a very effective way of working on cages for surfacing in plasticity without needing to go to this manual tool and clicking on every single fucking intersection. Annoying as hell. Tip number seven, bending a curve. There are two ways of doing this, okay? So let's say you had um, a curve like this, right? And it was flat on z-axis and you wanted to conform this to, let's say, I don't know, you know, let's just draw something, okay? Like this, right? And just, let's just move it in here. So we kind of, there we go. And we're gonna grab this face here and press shift s to subdivide it and we're going to grab uh, these points okay and we're going to move them up so we're going to bend the face right all right this by the way is a new tool as well so let's say you wanted to conform this curve now to the surface there are two ways of doing this one of them is going to be imprinting so go to f menu and look for imprint curve i'm going to go to my radial menu by the way if you want to know how to get it just go to google type radial menu plasticity and read about it you can you can set, get it set up in like two seconds uh, i'm going to imprint it so imprint it on this surface and then grab this curve here and shift the duplicate it and i got a curve here okay another way of doing this would be to project the curve onto the surface so press f type project look for project curve body select the body select the curve right and you're good to go tip number eight clone bevel size this is really useful and i wish it was a similar tool implemented for chamfers because we don't have that so let's say you have a, a you know bevel here right and you wanted to clone this bevel okay to this uh to this uh, bevel here all you need to do is start making the bevel click on the bevel you want to clone from and you're good to go okay another way of doing this would be to create a bevel 
and then hold control it's going to disappear but don't panic click on other edges you want to imprint at Babylon and release and you can keep adding edges as long as you don't confirm that with the right mouse button so hold control again add more edges right then just you know look around oh i need two more in here right and i think i'm good to go and right click to confirm sort it tip number nine imprinting a curve onto a solid without piercing through the entire mesh so this is a really neat trick and it's going to save you a lot of time on cleanups and also you know uh, save you from messing up your design so let's say I wanted to imprint this a circle onto this face, but I don't want it to go through onto this face. So what you do is press Shift Q and, well, in my case, in your case, it's going to be F menu and imprint curve. But I'm going to go with my radial menu. So um, Shift Q and imprint curve. Click on a solid you want to imprint on and you see clearly it's going through, right? So what you want to do is you want to, before you confirm that, you want to click here on hide occlusion and it's going to disappear, but you're going to still see it in here. So right click and you're good to go. Tip number 10, how to extend edges. Now, extending curves, you know how to do it, hopefully. You grab a curve and let's say, oh, let's do it with the curvy one because it's actually more fun. So let's grab this one, go to vert mode, select that, go to F menu and, and look for extend, right, curve. And now you have options, so you can, you know, just simply extend it here, right? But you can also go linear, which is going to be straight line and so on and so forth so this is a very very useful tool but you can also use it for edges and that's really useful because sometimes when you imprint something on a mesh you know you may notice that the imprint will not go through occasionally when you imprint on a model the edge will not go through the entire model so what i mean by that is when i'm imprinting an edge like this through the model so you know i'm going to imprint on a model it will just not go through the entire mesh it will leave a gap, you know, like this between two edges. So here's a situation I'm talking about. The imprint didn't go through and it created a gap. And this gap is gonna be an absolute bitch because you can't select faces, you can't create a full curve out of this, it's just a nuisance. So you would need to create a small curve, imprint it is a lot of work. What you can do is simply select this edge, go to F menu, look for extend edge, click on that, and it's gonna extend it perfectly to this isoparam. Now, I'm going to give you a bonus tip here. In order to extend the other edge, you don't have to repeat these operations. Simply click on Shift R, which just like in Blender, you're going to repeat the recent operation. So Shift R, and you're good to go. Now, you're going to have these fragmented edges here, but that's fine. You can press X to dissolve it, X to dissolve it, and you got two perfect edges on both sides. That's it. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. I hope these tips are going to really help you out. And like I said before, if you're really serious about learning 3D, then check our Academy 2.0 program. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.